Hello and welcome. It is Breaking Bad Friday and it is hot as balls, mate. I'll be honest with you. Oh, hey, have you seen this sauna? Like, this is England, man, and it's boiling. Well, that's a little bit unfair, actually. Balls don't necessarily have to be hot. I've always had a problem with that phrase, I'll be honest with you. You could have cool balls. You could have very cool balls. Hey, man, a cold evening playing football, you don't know. You well, maybe, well, maybe you do know. We all know. We've all been through it. I mean, well, not everyone. Cold balls, mate, cold balls. Anyway, point is, why am I getting so caught up on the balls? It is Breaking Bad Friday, that's right, the show that happens every single Friday. We watch one more episode until we are finished with it, mate. The entire series. Yeah, mate, honestly, without further ado, we are deep, deep, some might say balls deep. You really need to stop talking about balls, Tyler. Who are you talking to? You. The season that has proven to be very exciting indeed. So, uh, without further ado, let's go. In the little village where I was born. Okay. But all the richer for it. Mate, I'm here for this. What, you thought I forgot? Come here! Come here right now! I don't ever want you doing that again, alright? I don't ever want you doubting me... ...again. Flamingo! I thought I forgot. Filth. Filth. There... Mm-hmm. Los Poyos, I see. Oh, we get some more gust, mate. I'm here for that. But don't take my word for it. One taste. <laughs> Transition, baby. Good. I was getting like secondhand anxiety last episode thinking that these boys weren't gonna fucking make the quota, mate. Damn man. Gus is on it, he's so fucking on it. I'm like trying to trying to dig a little bit into Gus's uh character motivations, right? Because he's he's not an overtly he's not obviously someone who uh lavishes in his riches because like he doesn't have a nice car, he doesn't like wear very expensive suits, he's not living in like a big well, we don't know where it lives, I suppose. He's very under the radar, right? So it's not it's not like he necessarily enjoys the money. And it's like there, I was thinking like why would he be and I get it's for the show, right? But like why would he be there every single day? It's not to say that he would be there every single day watching the, the trucks go out, right? Or however often it happens, every week or whatever, two weeks or whatever the quota is. But um, would he be there every time? It's not, it seems like he would be because he's a very diligent person. But then it's like, right, if you're, if you're micromanaging this business so much, he delegates, but he's there a lot too, you know, and he's always at the restaurant. If he's not there, he's supposedly at other... Do you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I just, I feel like there's not a lot of time for him to actually enjoy his wealth, his riches, the, the, the fruits of his labour. So I'm like, right, so why is he doing it then? You know? Uh, sorry, that's just, it's just interesting to me to think about it, right? Because that he's not that guy. He's just not that guy. For Gus, I'm like, where's his enjoyment? And I feel like it's like a work ethic, right? It's for, I feel like it's like a business that he's built up. You know, it's almost like, I think it tells you a little bit about his character, especially like combined with what we've seen so far, right? He's got this intellect and I think he's very proud of his intellect and his business, business acumen and being this careful man. This, this man, you know, we had that line last episode where it was like, I hide in plain sight like you, Walt, you know, and I feel like he's proud of that. You know, like he's getting one over on everyone else. And hey, look, this is maybe wrong and we'll find out later on. But anyway, anyway. But I feel like there's enough in the show to tell you all of that stuff. Because I just found myself there watching that scene there and I just started thinking about it. And I was like, Tyler, just verbalise, mate. Verbalise it. Because uh, yeah, it might it might come to, to nothing. But I feel like, yeah, that, that it tells me a lot about his character. And I think he, maybe going forward, it can inform maybe how I think he's going to act and what's going to happen. Because yeah, I feel like he has this... Ego. I think he, he, he absolutely has this ego, but I think it stems from this intellect and this idea that he's better than everyone else at this and at doing this. And so we thought that last episode too, where he, he got rid of the, the cartel guy down in Mexico, right? And he was satisfied by that. You could see on his face, he was satisfied, he was happy, he was, you know, and I feel like that was self-congratulatory as well. He was like, yeah, I'm the man now. I, will, I always was the man. I always knew I was the man, but now you know I'm the man. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting. Play. To me, it's interesting to me. <laughs> Over by a pound and a half. We ship it as is. What are we, running a charity? Stop complicating things. You are paid extraordinarily well. This deal you made is bullshit. Mm, Jesse. A million and a half each. What's he getting? Good question. Well, listen, mate. 200 pounds a week. And like, what happens at the end of the three months? Like, what, whatever. <sighs> Oh, yes, he Walt hadn't thought about that. Fucking Jesse on it, man. And I swear to God, I double checked this like 10 times. <sighs> $96 million. Ninety-six million. Interesting. To our three. This is so interesting. Ah, oh, pause. Because yeah, now like oh right, okay, sorry. Oh my god, so many, so many things. Sorry, I just I'm thinking about where they've been in the show and where they've gone. Right, right. Just think about it for a second. Right, they, you know, they started in season one, small, small, small as you can think. They got an RV. They were cooking some shit. 
Jesse was going out, selling what he could. They were making good money for that, right? And it was theirs, it was theirs. It was their business, right? Then they went to Tuco. They were like, they were like we've, got to, we've got to offload more. And they collaborated with these people, blah, blah, blah. Then obviously Tuco went and they became the sole benefactors of everything that was happening, but they didn't have like the reach of Gus, so they couldn't make the big bucks. Now they're collaborating again with someone else. And now Jesse, bless Jesse, good on Jesse. And again, we're seeing that like hard, Jesse, that, that getting, you know, the business acumen of Jesse coming into this as well now, which I think we have been seeing slowly. And it's interesting that I mentioned the business acumen of, of Gus. And, and and what Jesse's saying is showing the business acumen of Gus and how uh, on it and clever he is. But I feel like we're getting a bit more of that from Jesse. And I think Walt is a little bit apathetic towards it because I don't think his priorities are so much on reaping the maximum reward, I think he's just like, no, it's fine. And he's, I think as well, Walt is used to less money. For all intents and purposes, he's kind of new to this game, really. You know, Jesse was doing this in, in this kind of industry before Walt was, when Walt was earning very little money for, you know, teaching. Walt keeps repeating that line, we're earning, we're being very well paid, mate. Let's just chill out a little bit. But Jesse's like, no, we, 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 we deserve more. And I, that's why I mention it, because it's like, it's going back to the origins of where this started. And these two together, making as much money as they could for this awesome meth. And now Jesse's like, yeah, we're like our business, Walt, what we have created here and our meth, is being exploited, we're being exploited, and we are not reaping the maximum benefits. And I feel like um, Walt is very much kind of on the down low right now. I think his priorities are very much like get the money, um, work on trying to get my family back, or at least look after my family. Those are my priorities. I'm not really, sh I don't really give a shit if I'm being exploited. I just want to get the money, and it's still a lot of money, and it's fine. I feel like we're going to see that switch. I feel like Heisenberg is going to come into play a little bit. I think Jesse's going to keep keep prodding, keep pushing. And Jesse was like. What happens after that three months? I don't think Walter properly thought about that because that you, you saw on his face, he was like, so that's interesting. Everything I've been kind of theorizing about with Gail and what Gus has got planned and the cartels and the twins and all that stuff. Now, Walt is thinking about it too. So, oh my God, this, like just so much in the scene. Sorry, I've paused so often, it's so early. You are now a millionaire and you're complaining? What world do you live in? <laughs> Fair play. Social commentary, mate. Where the dudes who are actually doing all the work ain't getting fisted. I feel like millionaires are some of the tightest people with fucking money sometimes. Do you know what I mean? The way they break their back to avoid tax and shit, man. You are the kind of person that can literally pay your taxes every single time. Stop dodging it, man. That's a small example, but you know what I mean? Like I was talking to someone the other day and there's like a window tax, right? So it taxed the rich more because they have like huge fucking windows. I found out yesterday um, that basically the way that they got around that was that they just bricked up a lot of windows, like some of them did. And it's like the, the, the lens that they will go to to avoid having to pay more money, even though by their standards, that money is like, da -da -da -da. And so sorry, that's just, it's an interesting social commentary because it's like, you're a millionaire. You're not satisfied. Like you're really trying to like make more money, save more, like, come on. I get that that's how you got there, maybe in the first place. I mean, a lot of it's like inherited, but you know, whatever. But sure. What's more important than money? Oh, and Hank, fuck, I forgot about Hank. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, gonna hit me in the nuts, isn't he? Asshole. <laughs> I keep an eye on that blue math of yours. I wonder if Skylar's gonna start putting that together as well, you know? Even right here in town. She is as well, look at that shit. There is no even breathing. It's cause she's got iron balls to- uh, What's not what, what- A balls episode today. A warning call, what do you mean? Oh yeah, I forgot about the call. I kinda want Skylar and Walt to have a conversation here. I want her to confront him and be like, what's going on, mate? Come on, Skylar. Come on. Well, the shot's framed for it. Get in the car. Yeah. Are we safe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you safe? Oh. Yeah, I don't know, Skylar. Absolutely. Oh, was that it? I'll be honest with you. I was wanting, I was looking for like a deeper conversation than that, mate. What about you? This guy. Donor, super dick. <laughs> Not worthy or whatever to meet him, but I guess everybody's scared of the dude. Sounds kind of Kafka-esque. Yeah, Kafka-esque, that's very much that. Well, that's what the episode's called, right? Very kind of focusing on that aspect. Fancy designer olives. Oh, mate, I tell you what, man. Give me a good olive every day. Every day. I went to see... By the way, by the way, Paul, sorry, not related at all, but let's chat a second. I went to see Top Gun Maverick last night, and oh, my 
God, the masterpiece that is that film. People were talking about it, like reviews came in, whatever, you know, you know. And when I, when I say reviews, I don't just mean like review reviews. I just mean like, you know, the, just the general audience reaction to it was so positive. And I was like, cool, great. And I was so into Top Gun as a kid, right? By the way, sorry, this whole thing just came out because I, I basically like one of my snacks that I brought with me was, and this maybe tells you more about me than I really want to give away, but I, I took olives. <laughs> I bought some olives. I got some olives. I got loads of stuff, loads of snacks, got some crisps and stuff like that as well, right? Okay, I'm not that, I'm kind of weird but whatever and I got some olives that's where this is coming from but it just reminded me that I went to see that film my goodness the way that that film blew my mind the way that it's actually like start to finish like just just an, an amazing film like if you haven't by the way if you haven't gone no spoilers or anything if you haven't gone to see Top Gun Maverick I would highly recommend going to see it in the cinema. Holy shit, man. Just, just, just story-wise, just the way that we respected the original, the the set pieces, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Like the stunts and the, like Tom Cruise and everyone involved who like was in those jets were, it was just like the, the oh. Like the set pieces, the, the action scenes were just, like just beautiful. All right, Tyler, stop talking about Top Gun, but like, whoa. How's everybody doing today? I thought that was Louis Thoreau. All right, let's just take a look. Oh, damn. I want you to tell me if you can feel this. Oh, man. Okay. Shit, man, that ain't looking good, is it? Right there. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it falls. Not the time, Tyler, not the time. I swear he looks like so much like Luther Rowe, this doctor. There. Yeah, yeah, the, the six. I feel like he's lying, you know. Nerve function is returning. Oh, thank God. Yeah, look at Hank. When does he start physical therapy? Next week. That's not gonna do it. Oh man. The sooner physical therapy begins. Wait though, because he was unemployed when it happened, so is he on insurance? If Hank had more physical therapy with better therapists, mm. wouldn't it be more likely he would walk? So much social commentary in this, I feel. Again, we're going really deeply back into the, the healthcare system. Because I feel like we're building towards a place where it'll become a thing of like, what would be like, I can afford this right now. I can get Hank the help he needs right fucking now. I've got the money, let's make it happen. But he can't because of all the intricacy and the nuance involved in it. Whether he would actually do that or whether it'll be Skylar maybe that asks him to do that. Or maybe then they, they, then they have a conversation about it and then they start talking about it. It's like, look what I can do. Look what this has given me. That's a, that's an avenue into the, the crux of the show, the, 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 the big meaty section portion of the show, this ambiguity of like why what is doing what he's doing. And is it good and bad? You know, we, we, we keep getting these things thrown what's way and into the mix to add fuel to that conversation. So we'll see, play. It could run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars just supposed to compromise on his care. Right. I've seen patients and their families go bankrupt waiting to be reimbursed. Jesus. Who is the best physical therapist that you know? Good question. Can give you some names. Nice. But they're not likely to be on your plan. And what can help me? Skyler knows. Yeah, look at that. Look around, kiddo. It's all yours. You are now the owner of this fine establishment. Okay. It's the best money laundry a growing boy could ask for. I feel like this has got to be a little bit of a wake-up call to Jesse, because I'm like, I'm sat here, pause, I'm sat here like, you're earning all this money. After this three month period, supposedly at least, you're gonna get like one and a half million of, of essentially illegitimate money. Turn that money legitimate. Do you know what I mean? Like buy up businesses. Ugh, it's a big thing and blah, blah, blah. And I don't condone this because I fucking hate the housing crisis and it's, and it's all a crock of shit, right? Okay, it's all horrible and it shouldn't work like this. But you know, buy up property. You know, I'm just saying like, what, what should be on Jesse's mind? Put your money into something that is gonna give you legitimate money and then you don't have to do the thing and risk yourself. The IRS, if they can get Capone, they can get you. Uh, Here's you, right? Pink, Pinkman, get it? <laughs> I'm a drug dealer. Eh, wrong, million times worse. You're a tax cheat. <laughs> a million times worse. Hand me that little thing, Ben. <laughs> ah, shit. I, I feel like I've got to go on to the better course all after this, right? And maybe you should grow up and listen to your lawyer. Nice. 17% and, and that's a bargain. Jesse, man, you're clever. You're cleverer than this. You've got to listen to this shit, dude. Oh, hello. Yeah, he's looking for some answers now, isn't he? There are uh, some issues that could cause a, a misunderstanding between us. He's so interesting with Gus because he seems unsure. He seems deferential, which I get. My brother-in-law. Someone called to warn him. And I thought it was Gus. I felt like that was my best guess. I believe I was their prime target. Somehow, they were steered away from me. True. Good that he, he realized that. I mean, you can see that last episode, right? But... Because of this intervention, I am alive. Ah, and we're seeing him... I think that this 
person. Look at him now. He's less unsure. He's playing a much deeper game. Mmm. <sighs> Pause. Hang on. Yeah, so it's interesting watching Walt's body language, right? He started this and it was, he started in the same vein and possibly just because, you know, sometimes you do, right? Even if uh, you, you change around a person or your relationship with a person changes or whatever it is. I feel like it's very normal, very human that Walt slipped into that easy glove. He's always been a little bit unsure. He's always been deferring to this guy. You know, Gus is very powerful. He holds all the power. He is this very professional businessman that Walt, I think, has a lot of respect for, a lot of time for. And just at the beginning of this conversation, how he was like kind of almost stuttering. He wasn't keeping eye contact. And now, and now that he's like leveling this stuff at Gus, he's calm, he's level, he's sure. You know, you can see that in his gaze and his body language. And now, and that's what I want to see more. There's this power difference between the two of them. It's so interesting. And we, we're seeing it here, and I feel like we're see, what we're seeing is Walt be kind of like, because I feel like like this is Gus, this is Walt. I feel like that is where, where it's at, genuinely. I feel like this is Walt doing like this, like reaching, reaching up and being like, no, 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 I'm on your level. I understand what you're doing. You're clever. So the fuck am I, mate? You ain't getting it past me. That's interesting. We're seeing like a war of wills here. I feel like Gus is seeing that too. One stroke. He bloodied both sides, set the American and Mexican governments against the cartel. Mm. He would have the market to himself. Hmm. The rewards would be enormous. Oh, this is Heisenberg, mate. Look at that. Look at that face. Look at that fucking steady gaze. And do you know what? And something that they do a lot, pause. Look at this. Something that I have noticed, I th when he goes into these moments, his face is shadowed, like half shadowed. I feel like that's absolutely on purpose and that's absolutely meant to show his darker side coming out to play. We're both adults. You're gonna ask for more money? I can't pretend I don't know that person is you. Yeah, and Gus is too. I guess it represents this, uh, both of them like half in, half out, right? Like they hide in plain sight. That's that half that's in plain sight out there being that person, but there's always half of them in that shadow, in the shadows, doing what they're doing. I respect the strategy. Mm, yeah, you do. In your position, I would have done the same. <sighs> Ooh, interesting. I don't know what happens when our three month contract ends. What would you like to have? Three million for three months. Extended annually, 12 million a year. Fuck. Call it 15. Open-ended. <sighs> Would that be agreeable? Like, they're still getting fucked on the numbers, right? But that's a good fucking deal, though. At least until Gus gets out of power. Like, do you know what I mean? Until, until someone dethrones Gus. Good fucking deal, man. Did he take it? But he's not happy about it. He's not happy about something. I guess maybe because like that is, I feel like he took the deal and I feel like that is him very much stepping into this life. It's a very clear, definitive decision to step into this life, right? And I don't think he wants to, but I don't feel like he sees any other way. Oh. Or feel like he has any other choice. Dude. Fucking hell, Walt. Everything that we've seen Walt do up until now, and the reason he is where he is, is very much a product of like him not wanting to be here. Like this wasn't his first choice, you know? We go back a few episodes, he was very, you know, and I mentioned it before, it was the most clarity, the most clarified that he's been in where he wanted to be and what decision he wanted to make, right? He was very much like, I'm out. I don't want to be in, I'm out. All I care about is my family. And it's, and it's always, we've always had these people pushing him back in for whatever reason. We've had Saul trying to push him back in. Uh, Jesse trying to push him back in. Gus trying to push him back in, right? And then, then uh, you know, combined with that, you've got Skylar pushing him away, right? So it's like he hasn't got that, safe, that, that safety, that bastion to go back to or to cleanse himself with, you know? He hasn't got that. And so he finds himself in this place kind of against his will like he's made his decision and you know he's made his decisions and he's he's in this and it to a certain extent he has chosen this too it was as a result of not really having the thing that he wanted as an option anymore and i guess this is like another deeper step i'm mean, assuming that he took the deal i feel like he must have done another deeper step into this world into this decision that he didn't really want but he was kind of forced into a little bit because he didn't really have any other choice. It was like, well, if I don't do this, what am I going to do? I can't go back to my family. Something that I mentioned all the way back when in season one was, was he, 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 can, he can never go back. He can never go back to how it was before. He's like tarnished his soul to a certain extent, right? He will never be that Walt again. 
And I think it's really, you know, the deeper he goes into this, the more he's reminded of that. And the more, you know, we saw like early on when he got the good news about his cancer and he went to the bathroom and he punched a thing. You know, we, you see that turmoil. That turmoil is there in his mind. And I feel like that's what we're seeing here. This, that, that's what this reminds me of, is when he's in the hospital punching the thing because he got the good news. And he's like, right, well, I fucking did it for nothing. I did it all for nothing. I could have retained and kept that life, my old life, the, the life that I wanted, that I would have chosen really, truly, if I wasn't kind of almost forced this way by, you know, the situation in society and the healthcare system and my cancer and all this stuff. And I feel like that's what we're seeing because he's being made, not, he's not really being made, but he kind of, it, like, you know, like the, there's, there's very few other options that mean that he's going to be okay or cared for. And I feel like that, that, that inner turmoil and the result of these choices and the delving deeper into this side of himself, into this part of his life, is feeding that turmoil and he's not happy about it. Jesse, last time you seemed pretty down about your job at the laundromat. If you had the chance to do anything you wanted, what would you do? You're gonna say deal drugs. Make more green, man. Forget about money, assume you have all you want. Ooh, and he does, he will. Good question, awesome question. I don't know, I guess I would make something. This is the thing, and sorry, pause. This has been such a heavy episode on the pauses and the talking, I apologize. This is very much a commentary. I might put reaction in the title, and there are reactions in here, but it's very much primarily a commentary. That's always what my channel has been. If you're new to the channel, apologies. If you like it, sub, mate. It's free. Yeah. But this is what's so interesting to me, and it's very re related to this, but it's also slightly off topic, right? You know, we had a situation in the world um, that is still ongoing, that, you know, began, what, like two, two and a half years ago now, where a lot of people were left at home. Some people thrived, some people didn't. It, you know, it was hell. It was absolute hell for a lot of people. And I think that's because a lot of people are not given the choice, the freedom to do what they actually truly want to do. We, we, we live in a capitalist world, essentially. Money is king, for the most part, not, you know, not to everybody. I think the thing that destroyed a lot of people during that time was that they weren't used to having all this time to do what they wanted to do that they didn't ordinarily have time to do and it was like oh god i got all this time now i don't know what to do with it you know i'm not used to just living and granted you weren't necessarily allowed to just live because you were at home and you couldn't leave for the most part but you know as an example a lot of people branched out into new hobbies they found i found the literal reason this youtube channel exists is because of that time and because I always wanted to do it and I didn't know what I wanted to do it on so, and I never had the time and the inclination and so I was like uh, and then suddenly I had that time and I started this and I you know I started to draw again and all these things that I set aside or maybe not had time for I think so many people and the situation that we've had in the last couple of years has been as highlighted that as a human race as a species we don't give ourselves the time to live our lives the way we actually truly want. And so many, so many people, I don't think ever ask themselves that question of like, forget it, you've got everything you want. Let's just say as a thought exercise and do that now, do, do uh, you know, I don't feel like I necessarily need, need to pose this to you because I feel like everyone's got, kind of gone through it, right? But if you didn't have to worry about money or whatever else, and it was just like, right, you are here. What do you want to do? What would you want to do? And whatever your answer is to that question, it's like, well, how would you make that happen in this world? How would you make that happen? You know, the, the episode is called Kafka-esque. We've had these real examples of industry and corporations and how things work and how it's not fair for the person putting in all the work. You know, the rich get richer and all that stuff. And it's so interesting, this guy's asked Jesse, like, forget all that stuff. Like, assume you've got the means, which he has, and that's why it's so prevalent, right? A question. What would you do if you could? Yeah, the social commentary is so so good this episode. I'm really enjoying this episode, honestly, just for that stuff. And I mean, you can probably tell because I've stopped and stopped and paused and talked a lot in this episode. And, and the reason that I do that is because I engage with something. And so the fact that I've done it a lot is because I'm engaging with this stuff because it is, it's so prevalent. Even today, even what, 12 years later or whatever it is, 10 years, at least 10 years later, this is all still relevant to our society and to our world, even al al almost more so now because we've had what's been happening in the last couple of years. And we all had this question posed to us. And I know it's not as clean and cut and dry as, 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 as that. I know that, you know, people didn't necessarily get furlough or have the money and they had to work for it. Do you know, I, I, I get that, you know, it's not a one size fits all situation. And it's also such an interesting question that our societies and the world that we live in a lot of the time doesn't accommodate that question. And shouldn't it? I took this um, Botech class in high school. Mr. Uh, Mr. Pike, my project was to make this wooden box. I figured I could cut classes for the rest of the semester. <laughs> looked pretty lame, but Mr. Pike, uh, he looked at it and 
said, is that the best you can do? Uh. First, I thought to myself, hell yeah, bitch. <laughs> but, Mr. Pike, turn up, mate, turn up. It was the way he said it, but wasn't exactly saying it sucked. He was just asking me honestly, is, is that all you got? Okay, nice. Thought to myself, yeah, man, I, I can do better. Awesome. So I started from scratch. Awesome. Made another, then another. Fuck, man. By like box number five. Jesse, just make boxes. I had built this thing. I want you to make a box for me, man. You should have seen it. It was insane. That's a good teacher. Fuck, look at that, man. No judgment, no nothing. Just just an honest question. Like, well, is it the best you can do? Or? I um, gave it to my mom. It's never too late. Make your box. Make your box. You know, I didn't give the box to my mom. I traded it for an ounce of weed. Oh, man. That doesn't take away from what you just said, though. Come on. I think it's important, though, that Jesse admitted that. You know, he caught himself there and he was like, no, 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 I actually don't want to lie. I want, I, want, I want these people to see me. I don't want to lie about this. You know, this is what I did. I'm owning up to it. And this is what happened. Hey, Sky. Hey. Oh. What are you doing here? Dick McCock, man. Sorry. Um... Thank you for your gift basket and cheese sticks. Cheese sticks. Cheese sticks. Is that what you guys call cheese straws? Are you coming in? Oh yeah, you should. <laughs> we were just having. Or she wants someone's cheese stick. Sauce. Really, be. I think I'm gonna take that bath. Marie, you set a rapper, you. Can we just talk for a minute? Yeah, he deserves a little bit of uh, an explanation. You know. I care about you. That's all. It's just this whole thing with Hank. I just want you to know that I'm. Bless him. But I really do need you to... Okay. You need to just tell him. If you're not kind of feeling it, you know, or you did it for whatever reason, or you're getting back at, like, Walt. I'm divorced, you're divorced, so what? Let's talk about it later, Ted. It's true, it is true. But I think this is a product, and we've been seeing it a little bit, of Skylar comparing Walt and Ted, and I think, honestly, softening towards Walt a little bit. And I think that's why she's kind of pulling away from Ted a little bit. But she doesn't quite want to get into that right now. Just tell me you really what... want to do this now? Yeah, you're right. Bad idea to come here. Man, he's so sweet. He just wanted answers, though. And it's fair. Like, it's understandable. I'll see you in a day or two. Yeah, and I think she's just got a lot on. And I think, honestly, with Hank, it, like, it is a lot. As much time as you want. <sighs> it's fair for her to ask for a little bit more time and then actually do it properly when she's in place to. Hey, you know. Let's kick it back in the gear. All right, let's start slinging again. Oh, mate. Come on, dude. Maybe I know a whole new market. Ooh. All we need is the meth. You're playing a dangerous game, Jesse. Because you're going up against Gus if you do that. Ooh. Very sensual. Breathe on me, Walt. <clears throat> what? The yield. 201.8. Are you going to... Oh, shit. I thought he was going to cook his own, but this is way worse. Jesse, mate. I see a couple new faces. That's directly stealing from Gus. Not just going against him, you're stealing. Oh. Guys, don't tarnish this place. This place is a sanctuary. This new version of it hit the streets and... Uh... Not that blue stuff. Oh my god. It's like lighting my whole head on fire. Oh. Stuff will burn you down. This makes me a little sad. I hear it's back in town. Oh my god. Ugh. Ever anything that you need? Anything at all? Here we go. Are we going to get into it now? I just wish there was something more that we could do. Skylar? Walt? Oh? We can always pay their bills. Right. Tens of thousands of dollars. We have the money. More than enough. <sighs> Ooh. I think Marie should know the truth. Holy shit. No, she's going to say something else. Skylar's going to say something else. You're into gambling. Nice. Nice. Walt and I... Uh... Oh, pause. And now she's in. Now she's in. Now she sees it. Fuck me. Oh, yeah, baby. Everything that I said and predicted about her, ooh, maybe a little delving into it a little bit and actually getting on board with it. And they've done it so perfectly. They've 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 weaved it in so perfectly to the point that now Skylar, you know, she's got a personal stake in it. She's got an emotional stake in it. She's starting to see why Walt did it because she feels that. She feels it. She sees it. She's like, we can help. You know, everything that I said earlier in the episode about her being here and Walt being here being like we can fix this right now we can give what is so supposed to be so unattainable and what we are being told is so unattainable what we can't do because of the money it's not on the insurance plan we can do that though and she's seeing why now and not only and it's so important that like it's not only that she's seeing it she's feeling it 
because it's Hank. This is so big. This is this here is so big. She's put one toe in the dark now. And I, honestly, I feel like this is bit, this is a little bit bigger. She's putting like a whole fucking foot in that shit, man. She stepped in that shit, my friend. Oh fuck! No, it stinks. Oh, is that a coin? Do you know what I mean? Like she's seeing the she's seeing the coin. Uh, it's not a great analogy. All right, let's play. Let's play. And looking back, I don't think I ever really understood uh, what it was that he was going through. Yeah. Knowing that he was gonna leave behind. She gets it. Nothing. She's been mulling all this over for the last few episodes as well. He wanted to provide. The truth is, he never took their money. He was too proud to take what he considered to be charity. Oh, she gets it. A system for counting cards. What do you mean, like Rain Man? <laughs> I don't pretend to understand, you know, all the details. Beautifully done, Skyler. And he realized. <laughs> Wolf's like, I'm in. Tell me. Find another place to gamble. <laughs> Sorry. I love that they're both leaning in and like, yeah, and then. If you do not want your family to find out, find another place to gamble. She's been putting this together for a little while, I think. You were sort of leading a double life, weren't you? This is lovely, because I feel like she's seeing him. Your fugue state? He did not fake that, Marie. She is well into this now. Whoa. He was suicidal. Oh my gosh, she is. Whoa. She went balls deep, mate. I'm not even sorry for using that phrase this time. Like, fucking balls, like, right in there, mate. Right fucking in there. He went right back to gambling. How could you? No, she spun it in a way that like does kind of like translate some of the what she what he put her through. Uh, good, good. No more gambling. Oh my god, he just took a, a yearly deal. It's into seven figures. Holy Mary, mother of God. <laughs> she didn't know that either. I like this as well because now we we've got Skyler on side. We might see like a little bit more of a, a different dynamic and more uh, like an interesting dynamic between her and Walt now. How did you come up with that? Oh, she been thinking, boy. I learned from the best. Oh, this is beautifully twisted and dark in the best way. Something tells me that Hank is here because of you. Yeah. And I'm not forgetting that. Fair. Mm, so maybe it was just a case of her allowing him to help and like set things right. I think that was important. Cool. I think that was important. And I think that was an example of Sila, Sila, of Skyla softening towards Walt and seeing him truly for the first, not for the first time, but like starting to see him and get on board with it. I think it absolutely was. I think there is still some reluctance there from Skylar and some disapproval and pain still, which is, I think, totally understandable. But that is a big step. That is a big step to bridging their relationship, I think. So that's gonna be interesting to see. Oh, mate, I fucking called that, I swear to God, because when I said, when when the Ted thing came up and what he was doing to fudge the, the numbers, I said, this, is the f this could be the first step that gets Skylar onto this path that gets her in a place where she can understand why Walt is doing it, what he's doing, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like we've only, we, we, we only got this, and I think, you know, we got Ted this episode, I think almost to remind us of that. And we only got this, and we only got scattered through this place because she was in that place with Ted. I think there's a lot more going on as well. I think there's a lot of things that influenced where we've got to and what, why Skylar feels this and how she's got to where she, she's at. I do feel like it was focal to get her to compromise herself in the way that she did with Ted and what he was doing. So interesting, such a good episode. I love this episode. I feel like this episode is catered to me, you know, with all the social commentary that I've talked about. And I'm gonna keep this short because I've talked a lot this episode. It's gonna be long enough anyway. And just basically just say that I love this episode for all the reasons I said. I love the social commentary. I think it's so prevalent even today. You know, I think it's a testament, uh, a testament to the show, but also a testament to how, how mired we still are in our world, in real life, with the issues that have been brought up in this episode. I think it's still prevalent today. I think it's still uh, something that we can talk and discuss today, which is sad, but it, you know, it also made me enjoy this episode a whole lot because it, it comments on that. With that said, I think I'll leave this one there. Let's keep this outro nice and short. Um, I have also, by the way, recently uh, made a full commentary of Saw 5. That's on my channel. That's up right now. Honestly, one of, I think, the, the most, uh, if I do say so myself, the most entertaining videos that I've ever made. If you've got a little bit of time to watch that video, please do go watch that. It'll be somewhere on the screen right now. Other than that, mate, thank you so much for uh, joining me this episode. I've got some links down below if you'd like to support me. A massive, massive shout out, as always, to my lovely patrons. Thank you so, so much for your support and thank you uh, to you guys as well and hopefully I'll see you all next time.